And let's get back to security um, as the Nigerian police force has condemned an alleged uh, unprovoked attack by members of the proscribed indigenous uh, Islamic rather Islamic movement of Nigeria and police personnel in Abuja on Sunday. Um, let's talk more on this. Let's bring in a security consultant, retired group captain Chewu Sodik, who joins me um, virtually. Good to have you join us. Hello, good evening. So speak to the, the history of violence between the Shiite group and security agencies and then the complexity of this particular issue. Well, uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have another clash between the uh, Islamic movement of Nigeria, otherwise known as Shiite group, and the security forces. Uh, and it's normal with these things, we have two versions. Uh, there's a version of the police that uh, the Shiites attacked uh, a security post near the Wuse market and, uh, you know, started the mayhem that led to the killing of two policemen. Uh, on the other hand, I've had the, uh, the Shiites saying on BBC Hausa that they didn't uh, initiate the attack, that it is the normal military response, that whenever they are having their procession, that the first response is the use of violence by the security forces. I had them saying that uh, they have uh, informed the police that uh, they are going to carry out this procession uh, just as is required by the law. However, what I would like to say is that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the processions by these Shiites has become almost an annual event. In as much as there is no law that said such procession in itself is just like the... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the nationwide protest, the Hashi protest, whatever you call it, is an issue of constitutional right of a citizen. However, what I would like to say, since it is very predictable, I am not a Shiite member, but I know I think their, their processes or their processions coincide with certain dates. That being the case, I think from the police to the intelligence services, they should be able to almost 90% accurately gauge when these people are going to do this procession. And in doing that, there should be some proactive measures that should be taken. Because why I'm saying this, it is not good that whenever we are going to have these processions, unless there is a law that bans the procession, it's not good that every year that somebody will die. Either the Shiites or the security forces. Whoever dies, it's not a good news for the country, it's not a good news for everybody. So I think since we have these uh, you know, indicators, mm. there are certain dates which they hold very dear, which they do this procession. So that being the case, I think that allows the, uh, the intelligence agencies and security agencies to make some preparatory plans, maybe block some routes, maybe talk with the Shiites, like they said, that the Shiites said that they talk with the police, which routes are you going to follow, and then advise them accordingly. So I think if this is, so is done... I, I, if I may come in quickly, that, um, considering that a court in July 2019 had a rule that IMN activities um, amount to illegality, and then we also see the history of violence that trail the activities. How should the Nigerian government and security agencies respond to this? Because again, you have talked about how it is an annual procession. Respond to this going forward. Well, to be honest, the, I, I, I'm talking here, uh, uh, I mean, technically as a security person. I think the issue of saying come out to say that the procession itself is illegal is a very, uh, is a very touchy issue. I know there is also a court that said the... Uh, IMN is a terrorist organization. I'm always cautious. I'm always cautious as a security consultant of timing everything as terrorism or every group as terrorist group. Terrorism should be reserved for something that is at the extreme end of the scale. I don't like when we use this term terrorism, when we use this term, uh, you know, uh, terrorist acts and everything. Having said that, to my own understanding, the Shiites are exercising their rights of procession under the Constitution. Which cannot be so. But of course, like always the saying goes, when they are doing this procession, they also have to respect the rights of other citizens or other Nigerians that may be using public spaces. So this is why the police come in. When the police come in, I think the mindset is first to de-escalate the situation. The mindset is to provide security for both the people doing the processions and so that also the other citizens who are not part of the processions are not also deprived of their rights. But I think uh, we do not see this. Again, I've spoken of the predictability. Predictability, these people do these things on certain dates, on certain times of the year. If that is the case, then I think the police and the security agencies, they have some leeway 
of trying to reduce this incident of clashes between the mm. between the Shiites and the and the and the and, and the security agency. That is the point I want to make. And uh, I think uh, you know, in everything, in everything, first the security agent has the right also to protect his life if he feels threatened. But at the same time, professionalism requires, as long as it is not a war, it is not a war situation. That is Nigeria fighting with right. another country. His citizens either misguided by political reasons or by religious reasons who are trying to show their disapproval with the government. In that case, the task of any security agency, whether police or army or whoever it is, is not to come out and kill. The first thing you come with the mindset of de-escalating, of convincing. Of course, it is not certain that such uh, tactics will, uh, you know, will work, but that is what you come with. Then as the situation right. progresses, you also have to um, raise, we do raise have the we do have to leave it there little to little force yes um we do have to leave it there the police he said um they, they, they are carrying out the investigation we'll see how you know far this goes thank you so much for your time security consultant retired group captain Sheo Sadiq. always a pleasure to have you on thank you very much